Good evening, all. I wrap Stane, and here we are on Tuesday, the 5th of March, 2024, with your financial market wrap-up. Now, it is Super Tuesday, so we're just about 6 o'clock out east. They're wrapping up some of the polls. We'll start getting the first projections. It's widely expected that uh, ex-President Trump will win most of the races tonight, but he won't be able to capture the nomination. He'll get very close, but he won't capture it. Nikki Haley has no events scheduled for tonight. So with no events scheduled, she's probably not going to make concession speeches. I think she'll watch, see what uh, her choices are, and we'll hear from her shortly. Obviously, President Biden, he's running unopposed, so you don't have to worry about where that's going. And I guess what we're looking at is the old guy's election one more time going to be looking us in the face. But there's a lot more going on tomorrow. In fact, there was a lot going on today. Tomorrow, you're going to get the mortgage bankers numbers. But then we start with the jobs data. You get the private sector ADP numbers. That's going to come out at 715. They're expecting around 150,000 new jobs. Fed Chair Powell, he's going to speak at 9 o'clock. So you know different uh, financial stations will carry that. It'll be interesting. Uh, there'll be a lot of questions. We'll get some ideas as to what he thinks. But why would he change his stance? I think he's going to just say he's staying data dependent. Uh, the market has been resilient in the labor. Inflation has uh, come down, but it's proving a little bit sticky. Uh, he might get asked about shelter costs, energy prices. There'll be a lot of questions that come at him. Then at nine o'clock, we also get the wholesale inventories. You at the Jolts report. That's been a market mover recently. Are they going to get another nine million jobs or something approaching that that are available out there? The Federal Reserve Beige Book comes out at one o'clock. At 9.30, we're going to get the EIA stockpile numbers. It is busy. On Friday, you're going to get the U.S. jobs report. This market right now has been a son of a gun to try to trade. I, for one, have known that it's going to be difficult. And since last Tuesday, it was. I basically pulled in the horns and telling traders trade exceptionally small. Half size, small contracts, because the odds are you're going to get stepped on. Why? All this data coming in. We know the stock market is advanced. Markets have habits of going up dramatically, then pausing or correcting. It's even happening in Bitcoin. Remember, this was a market just up to 70,000. So if you don't have a stomach for $6,000 breaks, whoa, that's not to say it's not good and not going higher. I'm just saying volatile as can be, and that's where you're at at this point in time in the markets. Now, China's proven to be a disappointment. They have their National uh, Party Congress going on. They're not offering details. They're telling you, we're going to grow 5%. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. They're not saying how they're going to reach it. So what it is is uh, mirrors one more time. And if you want to believe what they say, terrific. They're looking for foreign investment. Who the heck in their right mind? What, co what companies want to put too much there when the game changes almost every year on you? And it's very difficult to be there. Uh, we've seen that Apple's taken a beating on sales there just recently, and it's company upon company. So got to be a bit cautious. Energy prices, well, you have no deal between Israel and Hamas. So without that deal, it's not going to happen. Hamas is still telling Israel they got to move their soldiers out before there'll be a deal. That isn't going to happen. If anything, they have said that if you get a six-week truce, we're still coming after you, and we're going to get you. So now they want to tell them you're not going to come get us. Do you think that's going to work? Ramadan is, what, five days away now? The situation's going to crank up. There's a lot of pressure. Israel's offered a six-week truce. I don't know that they've gotten anything. I know, I know from everything I read, lists of who's still alive, not there, how many prisoners would be exchanged, but it's a non-starter to say Israel's going to pull its military out of Gaza. Never going to happen. So as you look at all this, you got to say, OK, how much did gold go up on that news? The silver market and copper market, how much of that rally was hoping that China would really do something to get its economy going? And instead, it's being sort of left flat. Obviously, in all of these markets and the currencies, they're going to look this week at the European Central Bank meeting. 
We have other central banks coming on right now. Canada comes tomorrow, so we'll see what they do. They're widely expected to do absolutely nothing. So a hard week, no question about it, and it starts getting easier after that because we'll have better ideas of what to do. There are times when you just have to fold your cards and say, it's too difficult. When I take a look, I'll come back to this chart. You're down for the week 1.15%, whoop-de-doo. The market is, I said consolidation, and I know traders didn't believe me on it, but that's what I think you have. I can say today, I thought today was the day that you had to try to buy the market, and by the end of the day, that didn't work at all. And now the market has got, it still has a pattern of higher lows, higher highs, but you'll see momentum's the problem. Where did you fall back to? Did we not say that you can go back to what I call the line in the sand, the 18-day average of closes? And that's where markets like to often correct to. I have shown you that over and over this week. I said, watch where the market likes to go to. It's done that again. When you look at where it stopped, the Bollinger Bands on different numerous times. Looks easy, it's not as easy as it looks, and you lost your bullish momentum today. For me, that was the end of the game. So now I have to wait for the market to, let's call it a reset, and say, what does it wanna do from here? If you get super strong jobs reports tomorrow, do you think that's bullish or bearish this market? While it's good for the economy, it keeps the Fed on hold even longer than you think. The weakness in the labor market, which you would think is bad for the economy, will likely be taken as bullish because it means the Fed's getting the green signal. Hey, guys, let's start talking. We want to be ahead of the curve, not behind it. If this thing rolls again, if we see in uh, April, maybe we've got to be talking serious. Where do we start these cuts? That's the thinking the market has. I don't know what the Fed members think, but that's what they think the Fed members likely are going to talk about. In the NASDAQ, you tell me where the market pulled back. And again, those Bollinger Bands stopping the rally. Now I'm looking for the decline in the Dow to stop in the 38,354 area, right in that general zone. This is in a downtrend. Then we step over to the Russell, which lost its bullish momentum. And now it's just an overbought market that could easily pull back to the 18-day average or lower, trying to grab its footing. So today was the day of loss of momentum. It can be gained back, but you've lost it in my opinion today. Then when we get to the notes and bonds, come on, where do you think I would think the pros are taking money off the table? The Fed's gonna talk tomorrow. You get your first numbers out of jobs. You don't think people are taking money off the table there? You didn't quite get that high in the five year. You're just stuck between the green, which is the 100 day average and the 18. Now, if you have that piece of news that gives the Fed or the market believes that the Fed has reason to begin cuts earlier, you'll take off from here to the Bollinger Band, but you're already in overbought territory. The dollar continues just what I've been telling you for a week and a half. I said it became so difficult to trade this, and currencies are one of my favorite markets because they're so large in their scope. But you're caught between the green, the 100-day average and the 18, just whipping back and forth, not going anywhere. Frustration for a lot of trend traders. In the meantime, you're fighting a battle at the 100-day average on the upper side. Remember, it's a flip-flop of the euro because 40% of the weighting of the dollar index is this, and you're terribly overbought. Then I look at the British pound, okay. They're coming out with budget con uh, ideas tomorrow for, for the Brits, and looks like they're gonna cut a payroll tax. That's one way to uh, do some interesting things, and at least that's what I think they're going to do, get some votes and lower some taxation on people. Okay, not income tax, a payroll tax. That's interesting what they're proposing. It did take the market up, but I don't see a trend. I see a lower and low and a higher high in an overbought market. Bitcoin from 70,200, and I just wanna bring you into today's low. So if you think this is for the bold and the beautiful, you're right. A $10,000 range. Not a small range, okay? I, I consider that big. I know you probably don't, but I do. And as I said, markets have a hard time staying over Bollinger Bands. But this market, 
it got itself somewhat extended. I, I think you'd agree with me. You were over the band, watch, right here. But this day, you finished out at 63, 825 over it. That's day two, day three. And I said, rarely do you go beyond five. And now you got your correction, okay? This does not mean it's bearish. Please don't read into what I'm saying. I do think that the market for the moment has probably spent itself a bit. With the loss of momentum, you could make a run for wherever the 18-day average is. That could be another from today's low, $4,000. The differential between Brent and WTI seems to have caught a bid at the 435 level. I look for resistance around the 470 difference. And if you'll notice, the market ran out of momentum against the upper Bollinger Band, giving itself a correction right here. I think the market is Number one, longer term, still bullish. But short term, disappointed in what China has done or hasn't done. We have another issue that's going to develop for world supplies. The U.S. is most likely going to put sanctions back on gas and uh, crude from Venezuela. As President Madero has called for elections again, the candidates have to register by March 25th, and he's barred his biggest, uh, biggest opposition. He says that she can't run, okay? And the U.S. has said, if you do that, we're gonna, in April, put back on sanctions. You can't do that. He's doing it anyways, all right? That's what dictators do when they wanna keep power. When you have the market up here at the upper uh, Bollinger Band on gasoline pulling back, I really wanted gasoline to hold that 18-day average better. It didn't. I think it'll spin around here, but this is a market that I think is bottoming for the spring, summer driving. In that gas, this is all that I was looking for, the upper band, and I think it, this rally probably is very close to if it hasn't run out of steam. So you put this together, you look to come up with game plans, and I want to be part of that. Each morning, the first thing I do, five in the morning, actually I'm up about 3.34, I start recording a video. And what the video does is I cover with you the Asian events, what's going on in Europe, but then it's all about charts. And we're going to look at daily charts with five different indicators on them. We'll sometimes look at a weekly chart, try to come up with an idea of an entry, exit, dollar risk approach to it, momentum approach to it, come together to give you trading ideas. It's the way that I'd love for you to try to start your day out. If you're a chartist, I think you'll get a kick out of the way we do this. How do you get here? Go to irapstein.com, go to the word research. Everything's laid out there right for you. I'm Ira, you have a good evening. I'll see you in the morning.